We have our first team in the Sweet 16. The Wildcats will keep on dancing with a 78-68 win over Dayton. Flyers cut it to possession early in the second half, but Arizona pulling away, holding, holding strong to win it. Four Wildcats finishing in double figures. Caleb Love leading the way with 16. Overall, a very efficient shooting performance for the Wildcats. Dana Jacobson caught up with one of those double figure scorers. She is with Jaden Bradley after the win. The game. Jaden, an incredible performance from you guys in that you had to fight for this one. Dayton did not go away. What was the difference in the second half for you? Uh, just came out with effort and energy. You know, Dayton's a great team. You know, they pressed us and we had to make adjustments. You came in off the bench. You did a little bit of everything. 12 points, three blocks, four rebounds. What got into you today? Um, just trusting in my teammates, my teammates trusting in me, and playing Arizona basketball. And Arizona basketball is headed to the Sweet 16, the first team in there. How does that sound? Uh, we love it. You know, we're going to get ready, rest our bodies, recover, get ready for the next opponent. Go celebrate. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Go in there. Mike O'Donnell here in studio with us. Uh, that's what a score is supposed to say after a great game, as it was all about my teammates. But tell us, what did Jaden Bradley do so well for Arizona tonight? Every time in the NCAA tournament, you know, you've got your best player on the floor, right? And for Arizona, it's Caleb Love. Mm -hmm. You usually have your best defender who plays well. That's Umar Balo. You need that glue guy. And everyone's like, what, what's a glue guy? It's someone who doesn't ask for any of the credit, mm -hmm. yet does all the little things that make winning plays. Sometimes those plays show up in the stat sheet. Sometimes they don't. This game... He was the glue guy from an all-star perspective. You need that third, fourth guy and to advance. I mean, that, that's how it works out in NCAA so tournament games. Arizona does have some stars, though. It was nice to see Bradley coming off the bench, but guys like Caleb Love, of course, leading the way here with 16 points. Overall, what did Arizona do enough of to kind of quell that push? that Dayton hit them with in the second half. Well, first, with Caleb Love only scoring 16 points, uh, you had other guys step up, right? It was secondary scores for Arizona that showed in a big way. And if you're leading score, Caleb Love had 16. He had to take a lot of shots to get to 16 points. So other guys stepped up. And I thought Ballo did a decent job on Holmes at times. But, you know, we're talking about Arizona's offense and their shot making. And they shot the ball well. 52% from the field, right? You hit eight threes. That's good. Not great, but good. First half was excellent. Dayton goes on a run. You weathered the storm. Mm -hmm. It was the confidence and mental toughness of Arizona's defense that we didn't see consistently this season showed up in the game to get them to the Sweet 16. We didn't see that type of weathering the storm, not backing down, physicality, aggressiveness throughout the course of the season. Effort standpoint was up and down in the regular season for Arizona. They looked dialed in this afternoon. Yeah, we've seen Arizona make shots. We've seen them look great offensively, but it was nice to see them, as you said, weather that storm from Dayton. A guy you mentioned, Umar Balo, he kind of went quiet in the second half, eight points in the first, a goose egg in the second. What does that tell you? Well, that's a little bit of just Arizona's office. They take what's available. And this is a tough game for Balo to get going in terms of scoring double digits because Deron Holmes is guarding him. And Deron Holmes is an excellent defender. So he's not going to get a lot of easy looks. The ball pressure of Arizona caused indecision for three quarters of the game from the backcourt of Arizona. So not easy looks to get into Ballo. Ballo doesn't need to score 20. He needs to be in that 10 to 14 range. For Arizona to be successful, it's effort for Ballo defensively, it's shot blocking and rim protecting, and it's causing indecision in post-scoring defense. I think he accomplished two out of three of those, except it, it, what, what saved Arizona is they shot the ball yeah. exceptionally well in the first half, coupled with a fantastic effort defensively. And that's what they do. It's hard to top the 13 threes that they made in their opening yeah. round game. Hit eight today, though, but we've talked so much all day long previewing this game about just how efficient Arizona is on offense, and that has to do with the ball movement. What did you see from that today? It was good uh, when they weren't turning the ball over. <laughs> <laughs> there was the stretch where Dayton punched him, punched him hard, and it looked like, oh, boy, is Arizona going to weather that storm? We were unsure. We were all watching the game saying, which Arizona team is going to show up. 
The Arizona team that showed up was a team that can go to the Final Four, that has talent to go to the Final Four. It was a preseason top four team in college basketball. So the ball movement was there when they weren't turning the ball over, and it was there in the first half. In the second half late, I thought their defense gave them so much confidence to play freely on the offensive end and spray that thing all over the floor. Pac-12 continues yeah. to be undefeated yeah. in this tournament. I know you Makes watched. you wish that the Pac-12 was still around in the coming years, but that's, does, a, different, but that's a different should, conversation. We should enjoy yeah. it while Absolutely. we've got it, though. Yeah. What's so great about this league in the postseason right now? Well, I think when you look at Arizona, it's great offense and the, the ability to be elite defense. When you look at a team like Washington State, which they're different than everybody else. They're just unbelievably sound, right? They keep everything simple. And, and Air Oregon, they had to go on a big run in the Pac-12 tournament to even be here. So they're a massive underdog. And Colorado has one of the best and most efficient offenses in the country. They have three pro players on their offense. So each team has a little bit of a different makeup. But if you're asking me to pick a team to continue to advance uh, outside of Arizona, Absolutely, it's Colorado. The Buffaloes are hard to slow down. And they've really come on hot as of late, too, making yeah. a run in the Pac-12 tournament. The three other Pac-12 teams will be in action later today, so we'll find out how that conference wraps up, see how many make it to that Sweet 16. Looking ahead, though, for Arizona, they will face the winner of Baylor and Clemson. They don't get to decide, but if they had their druthers, who would you rather see in this next round? Uh, great word, by the way, and I'll give you three options. Uh, Clemson, Clemson, and Clemson. <laughs> you, you do not want to see Baylor in this game at all. There is no question about it. Baylor is good enough to win the whole thing. They're battle-tested. They've played against Arizona is going to be a uh, Big 12 team next season. Arizona plays like a lot of Big 12 teams, and Baylor is tailor-made to match the physicality of Arizona. If Arizona plays like they did against Dayton, of exceeding the aggressiveness, the energy, and physicality of the Dayton Flyers, Baylor knows how to play against that. Clemson, the ACC isn't as physical and gritty as the Big 12 was is. That's not a good matchup for the Clemson Tigers. Saw a lot of physicality from Arizona. Again, congratulations to the Wildcats moving on to the Sweet 16. But on the other side of things, let's tie a bow on Dayton. Overall, what's your evaluation of the 2023-24 Dayton Flyers? Great season, uh, and, and not just saying it in a cliche way. It was a great season for Dayton. Top 30 net ranking. Uh, they had an AP All-American in Deron Holmes. He was terrific. You almost look at next season a little bit. Okay, you won 25 games. You were essentially in the top 25, at least for three quarters of the entire season. They were uh, arguably the best three-point shooting team in all of college basketball, and you've got an All-American. Okay, Deron Holmes a junior. Is he going to stay? Is he going to go to the pros? Is there going to be a transfer portal conversation? If I know anything about the Dayton coaching staff and Deron Holmes a little bit by covering them in the last couple of years, if, he, if he's not at Dayton, it's because he went to the pros. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately he stays at Dayton. If Deron Holmes stays at Dayton next season, that's a preseason top 25 team. Yeah. yeah. You surround him with three-point shooting, they'll be back in the NCAA tournament as an at-large bid again. What he does will... Uh, have a big effect on what Dayton looks like. Quite the ripple the effects of Dayton in the Atlantic 10. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that was the first question I had for you, and we sat down in studio. Is yeah. What's next for Deron Holmes? Uh, he will be asking himself that question. But, Mike, thank you so much for the great analysis. And speaking of great analysis, you will get it every night of the tournament on the Eye on College Basketball podcast. Make sure that you are listening. If you want to stay up late, you can also watch it live on YouTube. Either way, scan that QR code to listen now. Thank you.